Hey guys, Dan here. Well, it happened. Guess what I'm missing? The handle. Here it is on the floor. Time to replace the old pull cord. Got an easy, easy way to do it. So if you guys have never done this before, I'm gonna show you guys how to do an awesome, easy, how to replace your engine pull cord. Engine starter pull cord, how's that? There we go. Okay guys, the first thing that you gotta do is there's four bolts right here, okay? One, two, three, and four. So you're gonna remove these four little bolts. All right, they're all, they, they come in all different sizes. This one happens to be, uh, I think, seven millimeter socket takes it off. Um, eight, eight millimeter socket takes this off. Okay, so once you get these four bolts off, then you can lift this up and boom, there you go. And there's the broken string. You're looking at the culprit right there. Now, a lot of people make a mistake. They don't, they don't pay attention to what they're doing. And inside here, behind here, there's a spring. All right, if that coil spring, that fan spring goes wing, dudes, it's all over. It's all over. Go get yourself some professional help because that's a real pain in the butt. Um, so this knot right here is the one end of the string. And then this broke part right here is the other end of the string. And I got to be honest with you, I don't think the string broke. I think the knot frayed and it just pulled out because see how it's all twisted and curly? So I think that's all that happened, but that's not fun. That doesn't make for a good video. Let me see what I can do to make sure that you guys learn my trick on how to replace your pull cord the easy way. All you need is whatever size socket or wrench or however you want to get those four bolts off, get those bolts off and every motor is different. Okay, they all have different covers. So whether it's a small Briggs and Stratton like that one there, a little bit different to get to it. Um, either way, you take all the, the beautiful covers and all the, the crap out of your way. This is ultimately what you're left with, and it is the housing that holds the pull cord. Now, I don't want you to do anything fancy at this point, okay? Because there's a very important tool that you need. I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, here's... Something really important. This is a four inch C clamp, okay? You can go smaller, um, but it needs to be big enough that you can get it around all your housing. So you can go with a four inch, a six inch, a three inch, maybe even a two inch will be fine. But what you're gonna wanna do, okay? And you're gonna need two hands for this. So if you're trying to make a video to show other people how to do it, uh, that now's not the right time. You're gonna need two hands. So make sure you got a tripod for your camera. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your old string. Let's say this is the broke string. You're going to take your old string, okay? Let's say you were able to catch it before it broke even. Um, but you know it's going to break on you, so you're like, ah, oh, man, it's going to break. So let's push it back through the hole here. You don't have to do that, but let's just say it's fraying and you want to replace it before it breaks. Or, in my case, it broke. Put this on here, get it back through the hole, okay? Now you see how you still got your full spring action? Okay, and then you see how the jaws, watch these jaws go out from, from the fourth one. Okay, when those jaws come out, they grab in here and that's what turns your motor and starts it up. See that, see the jaws come out? Okay, so here's the trick, all right? This is the trick, this is Dan's trick. I've, honest to God, I've never seen a video. I've never watched a video. This was just something that made sense to me. I bet you there's thousands upon thousands of videos that do this exact same thing, but I've never watched one. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I never watched one. This is what I do. Okay. I pull it all the way out, all the way to the end. Okay. Now I know that the string is fully out there. I don't want to cut this off and let this go all the way in. All right. I want to hold it right there right at the end, I'm at the end of the rope, okay? I'm gonna take my C-clamp and I'm gonna clamp it down. And this is where you need two hands. I'm gonna hold the, uh, hold what holds the, uh, the rope. And so right now I got the spring completely coiled up, maximum tension. So I take this right here. 
and I'm going to tighten this down, but I'm not going to break it. I'm not going to over tighten it. Okay, be careful, guys. I'm going to tighten this down so that way I can have free hands for the rest of my job. And not too tight, but tight enough to hold. Now I can let it go. Now the spring is all the way there. Everything's good to go. And we're not going to have any problems. So now you have this knot. So, oh look, it's starting to fray right here too. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's starting to fray. So let me get a knife and I will be right back. We'll cut that. Okay, so I got a little pair of cutters here. I don't feel like walking around to my trailer where I have my toolbox. But I'll just cut this knot off. I'll just cut it where it's fraying. Right around there. There we go. So I cut this, chuck it, get that out of the way, and I pull the old rope out. Okay, now this rope's pretty, uh, it's pretty rough, it's pretty hard, and you know, it's it's getting ready to go. So um, we'll go ahead and chuck this, and I'll be right back with the new one. Okay, I'm back. Now check it out. This uh, Porter Care Power Power Care Universal Starter Handle. Okay, this is the the handle and a rope, and it's a long rope, so you can cut it if you have to. But this is the handle and the rope, brand new. They're like seven or eight bucks, maybe nine, I don't know. But they're like seven or eight bucks. They work for all your four cycle motors and most of your two cycles as well, unless you got something fancy going on. But you buy this at Home Home Depot, at Lowe's. You buy this just about everywhere. So remember, we got it all the way expanded, okay? So we're at a dangerous point right now. We don't want this to let go. If it lets go, we're gonna lose the spring. So we don't want that to happen. And we want the spring to do all the work for us. So what we're gonna do, and like I said, this I've never seen anybody do it this way, but this is how I do it. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this rope and we're gonna undo it completely. Okay. Now, the only thing that I have to do, which sometimes can be a little tricky, is feed it back in. Okay. Just the opposite way is if you're pulling it out, feed it through where you want to put the knot, where you just cut that knot, grab it, pull it through some so you have room to work, and make a nice knot. And some of you, uh, some of you Boy Scouts and Navy men and Weebelows and all you people can do whatever knot you want. I'll just do a double knot here. Just give yourself a nice knot. That's all you got to do. You don't even have to cut the tail off if you don't want to. Just do a nice little knot, okay? Now that's it. Now, we're going to let the spring do all the work for us. Take this off here. Get this thing up out of the way. Nice and easy. Keeping my thumb right here though for good firm pressure. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the spring do all the work. Remember the spring's coiled so I'm just going to slowly allow the spring to pull all the rope in until the spring is done springing. <laughs> Recoiling, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Make sure it goes in nice and even. Doesn't knot up on us. It's about there. And does it look like it's gonna go all the way? It does, it's gonna go all the way. So we got a good long rope here. So, now all you gotta do, find your little sweet spot, put your lock back on. And sometimes you don't even have to put your lock back on again. But go ahead, put your lock back on, just to hold it, just to make things a little bit easier for you, and just to make sure it doesn't suck all the rope in. So just a little something, something. Again, don't break your plastic, don't do anything silly. Just snug it down so nothing moves on you. That's all you gotta do. Okay, now you got your tail. You got your old handle. If you want to use your old handle, you can use your old handle or it came with a new handle. 
completely up to you for what you want to use. Okay, they're both basically the same thing. All right, we'll go ahead, we'll put the old handle back on. So what you'll need for that is something to push from the inside out or a little flat tip screwdriver. So let me go get a flat tip, real little flat tip, just pry that off. Okay, another thing you can do is you got the top here. You can just push it. That's it. With a drill bit, anything. Okay, now put the handle aside. And here's the broken rope. Here's the part that let go right there. That right there, man, it's a showstopper. So all we got to do now is we feed this through the handle. It's not hard to do because you got the guts in your in your in your way here. Feed that through there. Feed that through here. Put a knot, just like you did over on the other side. Put a nice little knot here. However you want to knot it. Put a nice little knot. Um, I almost didn't leave myself enough tail to make a good knot. If not, then I would just let the red, get it, if not, <laughs> no pun intended. If I didn't leave myself enough room, then what I would do is just undo this red C-clamp, give myself a little bit more room to work, and be good. Be done with it. So you got that, and there. Okay, now... You can just let this go now. Get this out of your way. There you go. We're done. Too easy. Didn't mess with the spring. Not even a dangerous spot. Now here's something that you want to do. In this situation now that you got this out, right? There's something you can do. Look at your jaws. Make sure everything's looking good. They don't look like they're excessively worn or they're breaking on you. Everything's looking pretty good. Okay, you can go ahead at this point and put a little shot of WD-40 right there. Keep everything nice and smooth. Keep everything running good. And then put this back on. And let me tell you guys a little tip too. Let's say you got um, an enclosed trailer and it's hard for you to reach up to the side of your mower to start it. Um, to do something. I don't know whatever reason. Let's just say it's it's hard for you to reach up and get the starter where you're at And you don't have enough arm room at this point. You can mount this anywhere you want Maybe it's easier to start it from from that side Maybe maybe you're righty and so you want to just be able to walk up behind your mower with your right arm and pull it real fast So you'd want this to be on the right side. Maybe you want it You know on on the back going backward. Maybe you want it going toward the front of your mower Maybe you want this going toward the left side of your mower. It's up to you. You can put these on usually any way you want when it comes to most of these open motors like this. So just a little food for thought for you. You don't have to put it on exactly the way you found it um, with most, most motors, you know, most of these open motors. Now some of them that have fancy shrouds and stuff like that, you need to be careful. That's different. Um, but at this point, I'm going to go ahead, put a shot of WD-40 in there, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I put the WD-40 on. Now what I did is I put it where it's hinged. Okay, in here and here. I didn't put it right directly on the edge of the teeth because I don't want the, the teeth to slip. So I put it right where it's hinged. All right, um, and then that's it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and mount this back where it was, because it, it doesn't matter to me where it's mounted. And then you'll see, if you just hold it in place, there you go. Jaws grab, and we're ready to start. So that's it, guys. And then you go ahead and put your four bolts back on, and you just easily, successfully replaced your starter pull cord. And all you needed, like I said, a little C clamp, um, probably a three inch, because a two inch might not be big enough to get around this. You might be able to go, you know, but if you get yourself a three or four inch C clamp, that's good. That's good to use for your brakes, too, you know, like on your cars and stuff. So Get yourself a little three or four inch C-clamp, something that you can just use as an extra pair of hands. Once you pull that rope all the way out, clamp it down to hold the spring in place. Remove the old string, fish in your new string, knot it, 
let the C-clamp go and, and slowly bring your rope all the way in. Put your handle on and you're done, guys. It's too easy, man. You don't need to pay that $45, $50 shop fee at the lawnmower shop to replace your pull cord, man. This stuff is really simple to do. So I hope this video helps you guys out. If you got any questions or have a comment, go ahead and leave it below, man. Thanks.